very special episode of Fantasy Football Consultants. We're roughly a third of the way through the fantasy season, so it's a great time to take stock of what we've learned so far and compare that to where we were when we started in the preseason. So we're going to do a draft. woohoo! And using our rest of the season rankings to see what our team would look like if we did a redraft today. Hello, everyone. We are now in the draft room in our half PPR draft. There are 10 teams. We got lucky, Gary, and we have the number one pick. At least we're going to make it that Woo! way. Uh, we, we are going to draft one QB, two running backs, three wide receivers, a tight end, one defense, and one kicker, and three backups. And let's get started. All right, this is exciting, Gary. We're in uh, week seven, and we're doing a redraft. So, That's right. So this so, is rest of season. does not matter how well they've done thus far. It's how well they will do from here on out. So we got a pick of anybody in the land, and most people say Todd Gurley. Um, most who are people other, would include me. Who are other considerations? Who would you think should be the top four picks? Uh, I think the top four picks are on the board. They're all running backs, not necessarily in this order, but you can't go wrong either way. Alvin Kamara has been absolutely fantastic. The most valuable running back thus far in the NFL, but don't forget that was without Mark Ingram, so his uh, carry share goes down. Melvin Gordon, it's not just the rushing touchdowns, it's the receptions and the reception touchdowns. He's been fantastic he in has that been offense. Utterly fantastic, and there's no reason to think that won't continue. Saquon Barkley, behind a terrible offensive line and an anemic quarterback, has been a revelation. And honestly, you got to believe it's only going to get even better from here because the Giants, frankly, the Giants front five can't get much worse. So our round one pick, though, is, is going to be, be Todd Gurley. Can't go wrong with any of these four, but I, I want you to be on my team. That's what we're going to say to Todd Gurley. And look at that. See, all right. Kamava, so, Barkley, and Gordon all go two, so three, and four. A ton of running well. backs uh, went first. Then we got our run of wide receivers. So uh, it comes back to us with the, the 20th overall pick. And 11 running backs are off the board in eight wide receivers, Gary. Yeah, and that screams opportunity a little bit at wide receiver. It's, it's a little bit surprising to me uh, that Tyreek Hill is still available. Tyreek Hill has the third most points of any wide receiver in fantasy, and he's easily the most explosive player. He's finally got a quarterback that can hit him down the seam. Sure, so go ahead and select uh, Ty Tyreek Hill because there's no way we're going to pick two running backs um, and pick three in the first three picks. But now I think it, we have the flexibility. That's what I love when we draft, when, you, when you're able to draft a wide receiver and a running back. The next pick, you can pick the best available and not be forced into one pick. So tell me about the guys here and which ones do you prefer. We get a, a perilous but intriguing <laughs> pick in Le'Veon Bell with the uncertainty of, of, of him as we complete this draft. Yeah, I'm actually surprised that he's here. So Le'Veon Bell and Mark Ingram. Sony Michelle is an interesting pick. They only – this offense, the New England offense, everybody thinks of Tom Brady, but they have run more as a team over the last year and, what, six games than almost any other team in the NFL, and they only have two running backs, Sony Michelle and James White, both of whom are on there, so it tells you how good a running team they are. And he's got tremendous upside because of that. Of course, Mark Ingram, you know, he was a top 10 running back last year, and that's with Alvin Kamara in the offense. Yeah. Uh, Le'Veon Bell can be as good as it gets as long as he's with Pittsburgh, and that's the peril. So that's Sweet what mother of God, what is the whole The other owners are getting frustrated, Gary. Yeah, we on, on the other hand, you got Mike Evans and A.J. Green, which are both on the fringe of top 10 receivers. But, Eric, if you ask me, the guy with the biggest upside, we are betting that he goes back to Pittsburgh and isn't traded. But, man, if so, Le'Veon Bell is top two running back. Sure. And in this draft, if this was real, a real draft, is this the time to take a chance? Or is it a time at the beginning of the third round to get a guy that you can, you can trust? Mark Ingram has served his, uh, his suspension, and he's already integrated back into the offense. That's who I would lean to. Or would you shoot for the fences and hope Le'Veon Bell? I'd shoot for the fences. The, the downside for Le'Veon Bell is that he's the lead back on another team. If you get the bell cow back. The bell on cow a, on back. A, on a, he'll be the bell cow back. Even if it's on a random team, that's a great third-round pick. I pick you Bell. Way and off. Off. Stay away off this time. 
<laughs> so, all right, we'll see. I was just commenting a little bit the fact that you said Le'Veon was the bell cowback. Oh. <laughs> all right, so um, so we see our the top three uh, tight ends are now off the board. Also uh, gone are 19 running backs and 17 wide receivers. Now we picked two running backs and only one wide receiver. We're going to get two picks here, Gary. Mm -hmm. um, no quarterback is yet off the board in this 10-team league. The one thing that we learned is – our suggestion at the beginning of the season is still applicable now that we would want to wait on quarterbacks. But uh, would we go with uh, the combination of a wide receiver and a tight end? I wouldn't go tight end because the big three are gone. Yeah, oh no, it's, it's definitely too early. When, once the big three are out, we're not going to be thinking about tight end until rounds eight or nine. So for here, it's a little bit too early to pick on your bench. So we're out with, uh, with running back. With wide receiver, you got Robert Woods, fifth most yards in the NFL. You got T.Y. Hilton. Very explosive with Andrew Luck, quarterback, of course. He's nursing the hamstring injury, yeah. so he's a bit of a risk. So this, Eric, is a little bit of a tough call. Robert Woods is the wide receiver one on a really explosive Rams offense. I like him, and he's a safe pick. The, the difference between doing this draft now in the middle of the year versus the beginning of the year, we were wondering about the health of Andrew Luck. And we, he has now proven that he is healthy, Gary. Now it's whether Hilton is, 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 is healthy. Is, is, is healthy. The good but, news is Hilton's practicing this week, and he may play this week, so you got to figure at least he's yeah. close. I, I'm Woods. definitely going to go two wide receivers, and I would go Woods and Hilton. How about you? Yeah, I, I, I think they're easily better than Allen Robinson and Golden Tate because he has a bigger downside because he competes with two other receivers on his own team. He has a bigger downside because, quite frankly, he's got the worst of all of these receivers' quarterbacks thrown to. It'll be really interesting, and I think that's where we go, but it'll be really interesting to see what quarterbacks are left when it comes back to us 18 uh We're crossing picks our later. fingers and hoping for Cam Newton. That's um, who I'm hoping for. Yeah, you can – I would expect Pat Holmes to Mahomes go and gone. Brady to go. Uh, yeah, see, there, and goes, Drew Brees. there goes Mahomes and there goes Aaron Rodgers. Uh, oh, there goes Cam Newton. That's a real shame. Um, so six quarterbacks uh, left uh, the board. But Matt Ryan and Jared Goff are still available. And Matt Ryan so far is, is two, less than two percentage points away from being the most valuable fantasy player at any position in fantasy this year. That's how good a, uh, a year Matt Ryan's having. They're, they're having total struggles in the running game. On the other hand, Calvin Ridley has been a revelation to go up along with Julio Jones and Mohamed Sanu. So they've got a, a great receiving trio. And Matt Ryan is looking like the Matt Ryan of two years ago who won the MVP. Interesting. The four picks right in front of us were all quarterbacks. <laughs> this is the time. Drew Brees, so typical. Newton, and Watson, and Brady yep. were off the, the, the board. And also, if you look at tight ends, the other possibility is besides the big three, now two more went off the board in Jimmy Graham and George Kittle. Let's take a look at tight end and see who – is left there and who potentially intrigues you because if we're not going to go quarterback or tight end we're going with one of our backups yeah and I got to tell you David and Joku and OJ Howard are all going to be available a couple rounds or maybe even a few rounds later this guy's getting massive target cheer and a quarterback Baker Mayfield who was very few people to throw to um, and OJ Howard I don't know if people realize this but 60% of the touchdowns that Jameis Winston has thrown in his career have been to tight ends so he's just a terrific ceiling, but I'd wait a couple rounds on them. And, uh, you know, I would, I, here, let's go to suggested players. But the, boy, the quarterbacks, I'm telling you, Matt Ryan, he is having a near MVP year. And I'm, I'm frankly a this little is surprised a, that he wasn't taken. This is very different from the beginning uh, of the year. So you are a believer in uh, Matt, Matt I'm Ryan. I'm a huge believer in that Atlanta passing game. Huge believer. Okay. Uh, this is going to be two picks, so we're going to get another one uh, immediately. Um, where would you go here? Personally, if we can get a running back that we trusted, exactly. I go there. But what about the wide receivers? Well, let's see if there's a good running back flyer here. Phil of Lindsay, way too much timeshare. Uh, LaShawn McCoy, terrible offense. You're kind of hoping he's traded. Yeah. Um, Chris I'm, Thompson, Marshawn Lynch, I'm not overly excited about either one of those. Wide receiver, is there uh, Josh Gordon and John Brown? Uh, I'm but a big he, fan of also Tyler Boyd. Uh, 
he has really established himself as, yes, the number two, but a cl- almost a 1A, 1B to A.J. Green uh, in that offense. Now, Green's the, the, the main target, but uh, I actually like Tyler Boyd of these three. How about you? Well, not so much for me, and here's why. Tyler Boyd is a very good wide receiver, no question about it, but I want to see Boyd and John Ross on the field with A.J. Green. There's only been one game all year where all three of those have been healthy, so I can really get a sense of what Boyd's long-term share is going to be. Josh Gordon, last game, got more targets than any other New England receiver, and Belichick has indicated that that will continue for the future. I love this guy's upside. On a flyer, I agree with the 50% of the experts to say Josh Gordon. Okay. I have, just for the record, I do have <laughs> some concerns. Uh, 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 look, I don't, I trust the New England offense. I just think that there's too many targets and too, too many people com- uh, competition for that I role. I just don't think anybody has even close, frankly, to the ceiling that Josh Gordon has. Okay. Uh, including Gronkowski. Uh, well, he's a tight end, so he's long gone. Uh, okay. Oh, I thought you were talking about on New England's passing offense. So, uh, so we got I, Josh Gordon, who's our first bench player. Yes. So we're starting to fill out our bench. So, um, so the one thing that – So now 30 wide receivers have gone. A little bit of a, a run on wide receivers. Yeah, no tight end was yep, picked. 20 running backs. Uh, so you made the right call by not picking Tyler Boyd. Right, Tyler Boyd is still available, so let's go ahead and pick him. I, I do agree he's quite the talent. By the way, so is Calvin Ridley. I find these two to be very, very comparable. So I'd be fine with either one. I like Tyler Boyd more. Um, so that's fine. And now you said running back. Let's see if there's a worthwhile. We're just looking for somebody with a high ceiling. Um, well, if you're looking for a high ceiling, that's Isaiah Crowell. <laughs> Isaiah but, Crowell, he gets less than 50% of the carries on his own team. And it's not like his team is an absolute juggernaut. He's had exactly two good games. They happen to be great games. But he's had three absolute duds. I, I, I personally, if we're getting a backup running back, we'd like a backup running back that we can count on. A second ago, you said you wanted a backup running back with a high ceiling. So that contradicts well, the one that you can no, count on. No, no, I want somebody we can count on. Somebody yeah. like uh, either Adrian Peterson, because we know that he's going to get the first, second, and goal line carries, or somebody like Marlon Mack, who it, seems now to be healthy again in the back running back. I do like the Adrian Peterson pick. The nice thing about Adrian Peterson, as opposed to Isaiah Crowell, Peterson will have some garbage games for you. But it's a little bit deter- – it's definitely determined by game script. So if you can predict when Washington is going to be ahead, then those are the games that we'd want to start Peterson. Absolutely. So let's go ahead and draft Peterson for our bench because you can't just have three receivers on your bench. You've got to have a running back. And All right. Calvin Ridley, of course, is off the board. So what, what is not off the board is any of the tight ends, which is yeah. really surprising because there were – well, four other owners besides us that have not selected yeah, a tight end. I, I think I mentioned, you know, uh, maybe four or five rounds ago that, that round nine or ten is, is going to be a good round for tight ends. And yeah. I think that's really proven to be true. I think what we're going to want to do is to probably pick a tight end and a defense here. Yeah, I think so. Get ahead of the curve on defense uh, for sure. And, you know, it's tough to say we can pick Jordan Reed. I think pound for talent-wise – He's clearly the biggest talent. However, man, are you gambling that he's going to be healthy all year? And he sure doesn't do that much. If you're scared off his health, um, honestly, I don't know why Trey Burton is ahead of David Njoku or O.J. Howard. But the Dave, Trey Burton gets maybe five targets a game. David Njoku and O.J. Howard uh, get closer to eight or nine. I, If you're concerned about Reed, I'd pick one of those two. Okay, well – Reed is healthy now, so I would select Reed. Okay. Let's and let's Reed. grab let's the Jacksonville Reed. defense, which I'm assuming which would be the, our number one defense. Yeah, I think uh, the Chicago Bears or Jacksonville are clearly the top two defenses. So we can go Jacksonville. And then finally, and, the kicker is going to be the very last position in the draft. Everybody else picks kicker. Uh, gee, people really seem to think Mason Crosby. <laughs> yeah, you pick a kicker based on the yeah. offense, and Green Bay's fine. Absolutely. So I hope you guys had a lot of fun. This is truly for fun. Uh, it helps us evaluate the, the players as of this uh, time of the draft. Uh, wow, Gary, we got an A+. Plus. That was cool. Hey. Nice. So uh, anyways, I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we'll do a few more of these. Uh, so stay tuned for future videos where we do redrafts.
We'll see you then. Take care.